Oh, huh? hello, Where are we? There we go. Hello, maybe. Hello, <laughs> exactly, hello yes. maybe. Hello, my darling. <laughs> hello, my darling. Hello, <laughs> hello my ragtime girl. It's, oh. it's not a Saturday night if there aren't some technical <laughs> audio <laughs> issues to work through. Um, it is Saturday night, the Saturday night of OnCon, no yes. less. Um, and it does mean it's time for the Weekly Dig. For anyone Ooh. new, uh, to OnCon or otherwise, uh, this is a live show where we dig into anime, old and new. I'm Brent, uh, host of OnCon. These are my fabulous co-hosts, John. Say hi, John. Hey, hey. Hi, John. And Steve. Say hi, Steve. Hello, Steve. Hi. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Looking handsome, mister. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so, um, let's start uh, the, the Weekly Dig tonight by analyzing an anime movie that we watched, that we, we, we showed earlier in the con, Miss Hokusai, uh, which we wanted to sort of dive into and and talk about to some extent, which is a very unusual movie. Um, now, had you guys seen Miss Hokusai before, um, before this particular viewing? Steve has. Yes, I've seen it a couple times. Okay. Um, enjoyed it immensely i was actually very surprised by it yeah um, there, there were a few things that and, and i kind of noticed in the in the chat even though i wasn't able to watch it this mm. time around because mm. my side two wasn't working but uh, i was noticing some people i was noticing the chat where people were like going if this happens and i'm throwing my computer out the window i'm like when that's gonna happen <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it does yeah, yeah <laughs> it's a it is a draw and it does yes mm-hmm. um uh, John, how about you? I uh, it was on obviously our watch list, and I was reserving the the chance to see my first viewing of it mm-hmm. till today. Mm-hmm. And I got up extra super early to get the dogs out and around, and I woke <laughs> up about like thirty minutes into the film. Oh going, no! Huh, what? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> oh, so I have a little disjointed experience with okay. this side. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, it's been a day. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I had seen the film uh, prior, so it was good to go back and, and watch it again because it's a very artistic film. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, it's kind of abstract in ways, despite being a very kind of grounded, you know, visually film. Um, but so, Hokusai, the artist, a uh, very famous Japanese painter, this is about his daughter, um, grown daughter. Um, and the kind of experiences she she has now, um, the uh, it's based on a manga which has a kind of a similar structure. It's kind of various episodes in the lives of these characters. Um, right. It's not one giant grand narrative. Um, but yeah, let's start with kind of the art style in general of the movie um, because it it it's very interesting how it's visually. Um, very anime, like it's recognizably an anime film, but there's a um, naturalistic aspect to like the colors, where it right. doesn't have that bright yeah. shonen style to it. Um, it feels very real. It actually reminds me a bit of In This Corner of the World, um, mm. just in terms of, kind of the, the overall mm. uh, color scheme, I would say. Um, but even like the character designs are quite distinctive. There's this, I don't even know what to call it, about the character designs that were just kind of unusual. Eyebrows. Eyebrows, yep. Yeah. <laughs> that was like the first yep. thing when I, when I woke up. I'm like, look at it, I'm like, wow, mm. that lady's got eyebrows on her. What else got <laughs> And everybody else has, like, her mother has none. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, okay, so it must be a, a times are changing stylistic mm, choice, maybe? Could be. yeah. Because, I'm, you know, it makes me think back to uh, plucking of the eyebrows. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And, um, you know, how that going further back in time was a thing, so that maybe mm-hmm. now this is a more naturalistic look. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay. So it helped me wrap my mind around that. I suspect it's also getting across the fact that she doesn't, she's not interested in her appearance in the way that other girls are. No, the, well, except the, for her hairdo. Sure, I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. Even though when she's getting ready to go to the, go to, you know, the failed attempt at Kabuki, um, <laughs> she gussies up more. Mm-hmm. But the entire time, her sister even says, "You know, your hair smells so nice and stuff." Mm-hmm. You know, it's like yeah. and she does 
work with trying to keep her her due quaffed, if you will. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, her mother even makes that statement. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to say is that um, it's when you when you read a little bit more about about her in real life and like what they show in, in, in the uh, movie where they kind of just live in a place and they go, man, ah, it's a crap hole now. So we're just going to move on. You know, it's yeah. it's it's like I, I feel that that's like her nod of like for, for normal conventions of plucking the eyebrows are probably just going, you know what? I'm just not even going to bother. I don't yeah. think it's 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 her being oh. progressive or feminist. I think it's just her being just like I just don't really feel like taking the time to do it. <laughs> that makes sense because um, they definitely live that bohemian artist life in that sense. Um, yeah, where they're just painting all day every day. Uh, there's a great line earlier where she says, um, uh, two brushes and four chopsticks are all we'll, we've ever needed and all we'll ever yeah. need." Yeah, right. You know. <laughs> Um, well, they do manage to put food on the table. They certainly do. Um, you know what I mean? When she takes her sister and they have some sweet sake in the snow, mm-hmm. and her sister ends up face down in the snow, but that's not, you know, yeah. she's okay. Um, they have, you know, some funding to be able to eat mm-hmm. and to right. do things. Because yeah. she points out at one point, she's like, we don't cook. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like. And the yeah. guy who's asking about the painting that the dragon painting, he shows up and he's got like a, a three stack, at least bento. Yeah. Where it's mm-hmm. like, interesting. So your patrons feed you and pay you. <laughs> How do I get Not a bad gig. gig. Yeah, I mean, exactly. yeah. 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 Get me on some of that. Yeah. Um, um, and it, it is also kind of um, uh, fascinating. And there, there we go. Um, you, you think about these classic artists and like, um, da Vinci only finished something like 14 paintings in his lifetime, um, uh, you know, uh, sculptures and so forth and, and so on. And obviously, tons and tons of sketches and, and such. Yeah. But seeing the productive output of this pair is mind-blowing. They're just drawing and painting all the time. They're, just, ma- the they're just machines. Mm-hmm. You know, all those shelves are yeah. just chock-a-block full of, like, paintings and drawings and whatever else. Just stacked yeah. in there entirely. It's like... <laughs> Wow. I was hoping for a moment, like when the doors blow in and you see like some of the smaller mm-hmm. sketch stuff kind of blow around. I was hoping like some of those shelves would empty. So it'd be like a shocking reveal. It'd be like, yeah. oh, there's 10,000 drawings here. I'm like, <laughs> I would like to have seen that because it, obviously there were. Well, this is the other crazy thing. You, you think about it. Um, none of those are finished pieces. Yeah. Because those all went right. to their benefactors. So those are all <clears throat> unfinished things or raw materials. So yeah, it's it's amazing. Um, Stuff like where the fire the, hazard, the yeah, nib no of pipe tobacco burns oh, a slight bit of the drag, and then it's like, nope, yeah. <laughs> right done. Mm-hmm. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Um, it's what you get for smoking near a uh, yeah an expensive painting. Um, and that's one of the interesting things is is representing the life of the artist or of these artists specifically that they, they are living in these. Um, somewhat bedraggled circumstances, but it's also very much by choice. Where I was like, this is all they right, care about. Yeah. Um, well, say her mother offers her to come back home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she's like, no, I'll stay with that. Mm-hmm. It's just like, so you could live in actually in a yeah. decent house yeah. with like, you know, nice surroundings. And instead uh, you live in this sort of ramshackle thing with a dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and an apprentice <laughs> and a lot of crap everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> like, wow. Neat. Mm-hmm choices were made <laughs> choices are made absolutely um and then you start getting into some of the the elements of, of the movie because you start with the dragon um and her kind of summoning the dragon if you will to paint uh, um which i think is a really neat way of introducing some of the more supernatural elements of the movie because mm-hmm. it's just wind right yeah the storm comes up and then she paints um, and you see the uh, this wonderful. I'm, I'm not going to be able to, to find it here. I think. Um, well, that was one of the interesting things I didn't expect in this. Like when I when I sort of came to and I was dialed in. It's like I was somewhere around the time with the great Buddhist hell painting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's like so. There's a lot of stuff suddenly going on. I'm like, ooh, wah, huh? Yeah. <laughs> when mm-hmm. when did this become like a ghost story? <laughs> yeah. What's going uh, on in this story? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you know the the the. Um, fun boy 
uh, uh-huh. mm-hmm. talking about the Buddhist, uh, the Buddha gods, mm-hmm. you know, coming and walking through. And I'm just like, wow, this is really going far beyond what I thought was going to be kind of a little bit dry. Be like, oh, you know, here's some anecdotes from their life and some things they experienced. It's like, no, it gets kind of freaky weird in some spots. <laughs> and as I recall, and I am not a Hokusai expert, um, um, this painting that Hokusai did, which is a real painting, obviously, um, um, it was uh, famous for being considered maybe not haunted, but people felt you know superstitiously like you know, I can feel the demons clawing at me when I look at the painting kind of stuff about this uh, this painting, and so th- th- it did have this sort of remarkable thing. And Hokusai did um, uh, uh, remark Alter on the it. fact. No, oh, I, I don't know if he if, if he altered it, but he did remark on the fact that he explicitly put in the Buddha in the, in the bottom corner for that sense of relief that there needed to be some balance to the whole painting to provide some right. sense of hope to people. Um, but uh, now, in addition yeah. to 108 hells, yeah, you yeah. also have <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. a single yeah. out. Oh, yeah, cool, yeah, okay. nice. Something, it's something. It's <laughs> it's throwing you a little something. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, and before that, which, um, uh, uh, John, I think you missed, there's the, the geisha that they help out. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's really kind of the first like, big spiritual thing, because they meet this geisha, there's some maiko there, um, oh, and then the okay. geisha has, boy, um, um, she complains, that people say that her, her neck extends in her sleep, and Ooh. actually, like, her face, like, extends off of her face in this ghostly trail thing. Uh, oh it goes, wow! It goes everywhere. Yeah. Um, so I, I yeah. don't remember the name of it, but that's an actual kind, yeah, kind of like vampiric. Yeah, kind of it's an oni folklore. thingy. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like yokai and, kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah. but the story that the the father tells me is, is like, I, let me come along and talk to her, mm-hmm. you know, to try to get more out of her. And he talks about it, it happening with his hands. Mm-hmm. I, I, that was so. I really like that. Actually, I really like. Yeah. That um. Um, and I, I suspect that was a, an actual Chinese ghost story that he's talking about, where his, you know, his his hands start moving on their own, and he sees them sort of pushing out. It's a it's a it's a very yeah. fairy tale kind of a thing, where you're kind of feeling through your hands as they are yeah. traveling everywhere. Well, it was a weird description. It was like I woke up and I could, and I I heard a tapping sound, and I realized my hands were moving. It's like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> and all okay. that was left was a hook. You gotta stop <laughs> drinking, dude. You're <laughs> drinking something crazy. <laughs> Get beyond that. Um, yeah, and, and exactly, Becca, you know, I, I, the, the supernatural stuff kind of felt metaphorical um, all the way, uh, really, until that, that scene with, with the neck and the head. And then you realize, oh, no, something is actually happening that these people can see and experience. Yeah. Um, um, and it's also a time where, I, not to say more vivid imaginations, but, yeah. you know, the... The prevalence of uh, of of scientific thought mm-hmm. was not as as widespread. Sure. So things are going on that people are coming up with fairly decent explanations on their own for that mm-hmm. don't necessarily stand up in the light of day. But sure, right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's also interesting as kind of a metaphor for artists being able to kind of uh, to see things other people can't see. Um, of having that you know, sharp eye for things um, that you know, the, the artists can can look beyond, if you will, um, and and see what's actually going on, which I think is kind of a neat, neat idea, um, especially in a movie that again it has a lot of these very mundane scenes of kids playing in the snow. Yeah. Um, so rewatching it. Um, by the way, there's a big red spoiler warning up there. I I, I want to point at that spoiler warning again because uh, this kid dies. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. and watching it again, I was like, they did an amazing job telegraphing something that I refused to believe was going to happen the first time I watched this movie. Where I was like, I no, they're, they're not going to go there. They're not going to do that. But really, this entire movie is just that she has a giant glowing sign over her head saying, you know, um, death is imminent. Yeah. It's imminent. Don't love me too much because I ain't going to make it. <laughs> yeah. oh, come on. Uh-huh. Yeah. Damn it. Um, um, so, yeah, poor little Haku here is, you know, she she's this interesting aspect of, again, kind of the artist's life where Hokusai is so 
paranoid about death. And he has this 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 daughter who, and it should be pointed out, you know, he's he's afraid of sickness, and it's not so much that she's sick. Blindness, you know, at the time was often thought of as, in a sense, a kind of sickness. Like there's something wrong with you. Um, so not that he thought it would literally rub off on him, although there's a little bit of that, because there is the scene where he goes to see her, and I'm sure I won't be able to find it in here. Um, and um, uh, he goes and he uh, leans down over her and her hands goes she up. She touches him. She touches him and his vision goes black. And you realize that's, that's, that's a fear, right? And yeah. he can't face. Well, also, just the, the absolute look on his face is just like this stun, like... <gasps> yep. Yeah. It's like, ooh. Mm -hmm. Germaphobe meets, meets worst fears. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, or sickophobe, I don't know. Yeah. And it's also kind of fascinating because there's so much... Uh, that's, that's, that's later. Um, because there's... They do so, so much with this idea of her being a lost opportunity for him in a way. In a way. Yep. Um, you know, she is certainly not the first child whose parent kind of ignores them. Um, and I respect the film for treating that as, yep, that's a thing. Yeah. And, you know, we, we, this is a... You should feel bad for it, but also we're not going to sugarcoat it and say it always works out in the end. It doesn't always. No. Um, and I'll at least give it, give him the fact that uh, that afterwards Hokusai is sitting there and he goes, <clears throat> "Maybe it's my fault. You know, maybe I gave her this blindness. Maybe, maybe it was my genes, essentially, that passed this on to her." Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's also something to be said for the <coughs> because of the bohemian artist life mm -hmm. that the connection to responsibility yeah is kind of yeah. a little little cut off it's a so great it's like, point i'm following my muse and you know the wastage that falls behind me the, the wreck and destruction i leave isn't nearly as important as chasing the muse yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. totally um um it should be pointed out in in the manga at least uh, hokusai has four daughters Oh, <laughs> that's a total, like, in real life, he had, like, six kids. I think. Wow, okay, yeah. yeah. Same mother? Or... Two married mm -hmm. twice. Okay, yeah. oh, there we go. Um, so, yeah, I think that's one of, I think you're absolutely right that it's one of those things where, you know, um, he spends time with Oe because she's right there. <laughs> yeah. She refuses to leave. <laughs> like, more exactly. or less. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um um, yeah, yeah, no, the, the, uh, this is the only blind daughter, as far as I know. Um, um, and, uh, yeah, and then, and, I, like, I, I, I want to talk about it, you know, the... the Mantis, yes, I agree. Bring, yeah, we'll get to that. Um, speaking of the, 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 the death of the daughter, um, we get that shot where O.A. realizes what's going on, and we get one of the most impressive, long animated shot, full cell animated shots of OA running down the road. Yeah. Um, and it just goes on and on because, and the thing about this shot is there's no separate background. Somebody is right. redrawing that every frame all the way through for second after second after second after second. Um, and in a film about art, I think it really underscores the power of that moment that they're like this is that we're we're throwing it into this one scene because this is kind of what it's what it's you know what we're talking about here. Yeah, because I mean, honestly, not to 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 again bring the kind of moment up, but you could have Scooby Dooed it. Yeah, and it yeah. really wouldn't have been jarring Absolutely. because you're focusing on her running. Mm -hmm. yeah. But no, they invested in that fact where it's like, nope, we're we're doing the whole thing. Mm -hmm. The whole thing from soup to nuts, we're doing to have her streaming down this section, and we're not just going to just carbon copy it. Mm -hmm. we're, gonna do, we're going to do a real thing. That's a great point because it, absolutely, especially with a, a a scene of shock, you could yeah. you all you could you could easily cut this out and just have oh my gosh, you know, cut oh my gosh, 
right and have, have right. it very very still or even style like super stylistically blurred mm-hmm. it you know to give that sense that she might not be moving fast but in her mind she's just blindingly running through the city and that you could have just blurred all that no you get to see everything that she's running through all yeah. that's going on there. i was like oh wow that is a commitment yeah absolutely um and yeah um let's talk about the grasshopper um, I do want to kind of praying, talk about praying that. Mantis. Praying Mantis, excuse me. Um, Which I didn't have a chance to look up and see what it, what's the significance of Praying Mantis. Um, well, I think it's a couple of things. Um, you know, uh, Praying Mantises do, you know, feed on other Praying Mantises. Mm. And I think that that's a good symbol there. Um, also, I think it is just... Um, I read this as a moment where O.A., with her artist perspective, sees this thing and doesn't just see it as another creature. She sees every detail of this insect. Um, it's her, her artist's ability to see it for what it is, um, right. which is really what she is doing for her sister. Um, whereas for most other people, and it's also m- remarkable to note, because I was expecting this, no one treats the little sister badly. Yeah. You know, we never see any bullying, anything like that of a little sister. Which I was expecting that when they're having the sweet sake. Yeah. And mm-hmm. the kid, and she, you know, she looks over and the kid's got like a snowball right mm-hmm. in front of her. And I'm like, oh, Here we boy, go. this is going to be like, ah, ha, ha, you're blind. And she's going to hit her with it. But it's yeah. like, no, actually, totally cool with her. Plays with her, knocks stuff out of the trees. It's interested in what she's doing. It's like, mm-hmm. well, wow, you guys took the high road on that. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Exactly. You're going to crush my heart later, so let's just not make it worse now. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, that's good. Exactly. Um... We'll send a spit take. <laughs> um... I'll get you with one of those one of these days. <laughs> you and your little dog, too. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a really, really remarkable film. Um, won quite a few awards, by the way, when it came out. Um, Currently holds a ninety three percent approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, it also won the uh, uh, I I love this at the uh, sequences award. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Um, at the Fantasia National Film Festival, it won the Satoshi Kon Award. <laughs> the year it came out, so I'm like, that's <laughs> nice. You know, pretty cool. Cool. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, hello, Satoshi Kone, but that just doesn't, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not a very yeah. Satoshi Kone film, but I can see some parallels, right? Like, it's right. fine. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a really interesting film. And one of the reasons that like, we're not talking about the plot is because the plot, like, really isn't significant. Like, there really is no plot. No plot. Yeah, yeah it's just a, 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 a series of moments. In fact, it's fascinating to me at the end that you see um, OA on the bridge... Um, talking giving, about her father and the mm-hmm. apprentice and everybody else around her. Yeah, and, and giving us, you know, my father died at the age of 90. Um, and you realize that's in her future. Yeah, right. that's obviously not her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Unless she's aged from one. <laughs> <Yeah, yeah, yeah. laughs> <laughs> and it's that wonderful moment of when we talk about Isa Takahata being very interested in, you know, animation as medium and realizing this is animation. Um, where's that moment where they're like, you know, we, we don't have to show you what she looks like when she's 65 or whatever, right? right? Like, that's just not important right now. This is the denouement. This is the scene. Um, and so we're going to give you that, okay, here's how all of this kind of ended up. Um, and because it all comes back to the bridge. Uh, yeah. and it's all, it all kind of ties back together in this wonderful way. Um, and I will say that there were moments, I, I, I get the electric guitar i i do get it yeah uh-huh. <laughs> at the same time it's like i'm expecting like koto music I'm expecting, mm-hmm. I'm expecting like period music and i'm like wow okay yeah. this is a stylistic, stylistic choice, choice. <laughs> yeah like, well this is something i wanted to, to ask both of you particularly you steve the, the musical choices in this film are very distinctive what did you think of that um, it threw me off because it, 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 I, I was thinking the same thing, thing. i mean everything about this movie like uh, you know, talking about the historical perspective of everything in the anime today. This movie is definitely historical. Um, 
in, in its look, uh, one, one of the things that impressed me was that it, they, they, they got, got the town right. You know, yeah, they got, got the bridge right. They got what the streets look like. They got, you know, when they were talking about the fires. Yeah. Um, you know, they got that part of it right. Um, so there was a lot of it that was like, that was right. And then suddenly you hear the music and you're like, you know, like, you know, Kyoto, Shami sent something, right? Yeah, and then, and then you, and then it, it, then you hear guitar and it's just like going, okay. Yeah. But then, you know, if you stop and you think about it, it's talking about, you know, if we're talking about artists, we're also talking about breaking new ground and talking about one of the reasons why Hakusai was so um well sought after and the reason why he actually changed his name several times because Hakusai is not actually his real name mm. he went through several several aliases and um <laughs> to escape creditors right mm -hmm. <laughs> um but you know he's his his work was a lot different for the time period which mm. you know 1810s 1820s whatever mm -hmm. um so you know it kind of makes sense where you're just like going okay here's what you think and here's these artists who are at the top of their game because they are so different from everyone else so you know here's something different to yeah. listen to as you're, as, you're, as you're doing this and it's not so much for modernity of uh, something being modern as it is just different mm -hmm. because it, you know all that artwork is different from what we, from everything else that was going on mm -hmm. totally makes sense um for what it's worth i just i have got to just look, just look this up on wikipedia um uh, Hokusai produced over 30,000 paintings, sketches, woodblock prints, and images for picture books Holy over his lifetime. Moly. <laughs> um, keep in mind that, that the people who uh, marketed their work, the, mm. the people who you know went for them to sell their work and stuff, um, Hokusai signed things that his daughter did. Mm -hmm. yeah. So and they, and they, and they kind of knew that it was that it was a team effort. It wasn't just Hawkeye himself. It was mm -hmm. his daughter as well. Mm -hmm. And they were both for years like doing, they knew that they were collaborating or one was doing for the other. And Hawkeye was just signing his name to every single piece that was going out. Mm -hmm. So that, because it was better to have his name on there as opposed to her name. Because mm -hmm. that's what's going to sell. Yep. Which, you know, that makes me immediately think of Marcus Kasabi and the factory in uh in the 1980s oh, where kasabi yeah. kasabi would bring in all of right. his yeah. apprentices mm. and the apprentices and it was in new york city mm. um mm -hmm. and kasabi would bring all these apprentices into the factory and they would all make art and then kasabi would sign it wow <laughs> it was yeah. like, mm -hmm. yeah. all of a sudden you have one artist famous guy who's yeah. making 30,000 pieces and it's like mm -hmm. hey wait a minute yeah. I'm starting to see how that works I think about <laughs> it's it pretty mm. good well, I wonder if he signed off on his apprentice as well because mm. his apprentice guy was trying to oh, yeah. come up with stuff on his own so mm -hmm. would he also have submitted works to Hokusai to get signed off on I don't know yeah could be that would explain a, you know a greater yeah 30,000 yeah. <laughs> yeah right that's a lot um, and, great, and I'm, I'm sure that there's also the you know, the, the Atomotesica you know, effect, if yeah. you will, where, you know, um, yes, Tezuka's pen touched every page, but it may have just been a face, right? And then <laughs> everything else was filled in by assistance. So who knows? Um, but yeah, it's, it's a definitely an interesting film for being, like you say, a, a, an art piece, really, yeah. in, in its own right. Um, anything else you guys wanted to mention about Miss Hokusai before we moved on? I would like to say that um, even though I didn't get to watch it today, mm -hmm. um, I took my own advice and you know and the advice of that wonderful um, panel discussion about relaxing anime and actually watched the first two episodes of uh, Laid Back Camp. Hey! <laughs> so, and it was every bit. I was I was just like, okay, I'm gonna watch this, and then by this end of the second episode, before we came back for the auction, I'm like. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that fire looks nice. Yeah. Oh, man. I really want to sit by that lake and look yeah, right? at Mount Fuji and be like, "Oh yeah, this is the thing, man." Oh, what's yeah. What's crazy is there's a there's a live action adaptation of Laid Back Camp. Um, it's a wow. Japanese series, and it's a thing. Um, but wow. um, they go to the same places, and it's obviously filmed. 
and you look at it and it's like, yep, that's, th yeah, <laughs> they, they nailed the exact look of that place. Like you set down a camera, that's exactly what it looks like. Well, after I saw that that episode where I think it's where Reen goes to the lakeside, she sets up camp, and you see Mount Fuji. I looked up. I'm like, this. I wonder if this is a place, and if there isn't a barn, a field, yeah. <laughs> a lake, and Mount Fuji, I'm like, oh my god, it's like exact like one to one drawing of this scene. I'm like, I'll be damned. What's great like, is there's a YouTuber who lives in Japan and has like a blue Vespa. And, oh. and she actually like she she started watching laid back camp and she started she started going around and visiting the places and doing kind of it you know because obviously you get the right. the um produced version of it but she's like if i wander in as a random person like what's my experience like right um and so that's kind of cool she'll, she'll go in and she'll like, like set up a little a, a little tent and like make ramen or whatever while it's there oh so that's that's fun to watch too and and I did laugh my butt off at the and I think was it the second episode mm -hmm. where the friend that she makes um, I'm still wearing the names that sure. Rin makes that is running at her uh, yeah running at the at, running at her going I knew where she was so, <laughs> just went right into the window I laughed so hard because I was not expecting that mm -hmm. I was expecting I don't know what I was expecting but I was not expecting the, the full <laughs> one of pop. And then, and then just like pull back and she's just like, uh, and slides down. And, uh, now you see why we talk about this show, Steve. And the dogs. And the dogs. Yeah, the dogs. one dog that gets, just gut punches her. Just which, uh, Chico, Chikawa, I think is the yeah. is the little dog. Um, which this one I noticed, I, I had a difficult time in Hokusai figuring out mm. timing. Right. Except for mm. when I dialed in on the dog. It's like right. the dog shows up <laughs> and it is a puppy. Right, and then by the time you get to the end of the show, That's it is right. a full-on yeah, yeah, yeah. adult dog, and I'm like, "Wow, okay, I don't really. There's not really any other sort of time indicators. Like, mm -hmm. you don't see her father getting grayer and getting more stooped over. Yep. You don't see anybody particularly changing huge wise, mm -hmm. except for the dog. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, ah, it's an interesting time measure. Yeah, yeah. it was a yeah. uh, pretty clever, actually. Yeah, um, and the oh. dog had really creepy eyes. Yeah, <laughs> it was cute. It was cute, but it was a cute dog, and, but it was yeah. just and, kind and, of creepy. And speaking of creepy, in real life, it's the same as the end of the movie when she describes what happens to her. She walks off and nobody knows what happens. Really? Yeah. Wow. They say that she, I mean, they know about the year that she died, but not mm. how it happened. Oh, okay. Or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And, but she just, like, kind of just put the pen and paper down and walked away. Mm -hmm. And they said that um, there's stories that. You know, she was actually just wandering around the countryside. She got married to a woman for a little while, hmm. and she got divorced from her as well. And she, you know, just went into the countryside and started making dolls. Interesting. Did she found that town that's full of creepy dolls. <laughs> She's the one. She's responsible. She's the one. Yes. Wow. <laughs> and given that at the end of the story, she obviously is young, but describing her dad dying at 90, mm -hmm. she's the old lady that features in the stories today. She's still alive. Uh, oh, Supernatural. Mm -hmm. It all comes together. Um, at least in my diseased mind. <laughs> sure. sure. That works. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, we'll be back in just a minute to talk about some of the stuff we've been watching and, uh, um, uh, talk about some, some other things as well and maybe do some news back Ooh. in just a bit. Sweet.
Nope. No, nope. we're not. Nope. That's nope. a lie. Back. Oh, there we go. Hey. Come on, why I can. So, yes, we have just talked about Miss Hokusai. Welcome back. Uh, take a moment, a little breather, talk about how our week's been and the anime we've been watching. Uh, folks in the chat, please let us know how your week's been, what you've been watching lately, and any questions you have for the three of us. Um, John, how about you? I've been keeping up with the Joneses for all this current season again, mm -hmm. and, and it's just it's been busy at work, so I haven't mm -hmm. gotten as much of it done as I possibly can, so you figure I'm getting two episodes of stuff done a day. Mm -hmm. It's not nearly the four that I like to get done if I can. Sure. Um, you can just because it's been day? so busy. God, I'm, I'm lucky if I can do it. Oh, I will, Jesus. if I'm not, if I, if I can catch up on Genshin until I get the dailies done, I'll watch two episodes, <laughs> then go to lunch, and at lunch I'll watch another episode, then I'll watch an episode when I get home for dinner. Mm -hmm. Wow. So I, that's the only way I can keep up with this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, you know, a lot of the current stuff going on, it's like I'm I'm getting there, but it's didn't have a lot of time i ended up filling sure. in uh cup mo a lot more so i've caught up more on cup mo because it's 14 minutes so i could just uh, yeah. i could knock yeah, that yeah, out yeah. Yeah. get it off the queue as fast as i can and then mm -hmm. move on with my life so nice. it's been it's been busy you know and again yeah. this morning it's like i'm trying to get to oncon so i don't usually get up at like 10 of 7 in the morning oh yep so it's like one of those things where it's like, okay, get the dogs walked down. Ah, doing good, doing good. Get through most of OnCon today in that first 30 minutes of Focus Eye. I'm like, okay, let's watch this. Well. Ah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, what, where am I? What happened? My life's a lie. <laughs> I may, I'm, my life's a lie. Um, um, I may have a solution for you for next OnCon, but we'll get to that later on. Coffee. For Lots some, of yeah, coffee. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Steve, how about Steam you? Steam you crank. No. <laughs> Steam no. no. Um, so, like I said, I just started watching Laid Back Camp, and, mm. and I'm just, I'm like going, damn it, John, you're right. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was just so, I mean, it, it, it really is just watching her, you know, put everything up and all that stuff, and, you know, and... You know, just sitting there in the chair, and it was kind of fun to just have that weird voice over like, and you must have a drive like that. You're going down the fire. You know, there's little things happening, just the, the moments that make me laugh out loud, and, and just like the whole comfort zone of being in that weather. Because I'm that person. I'm the person who will sit in the chair in the winter on the beach with the wind blowing. And shivering and just going, this is great. I it. But it's, you know? it's the best time to do it. <laughs> do it. Because yes. when you like, Rin pulls her like blanket hoodie thing yep. up and she's just sitting there in the chair. I'm she's like, got a book. Oh, I'm like, dude, I no, I don't want to be there when it's like 98 degrees out and you're mm -hmm. like, I'm dying. It's like, no, put more more stuff on and then sit out there and watch the lake and be like, mm, this is awesome. I yes. love this. Yeah. <laughs> And then I realized, then I realized that I had been doing this, watching these kinds of shows this entire time only in live action. Oh. Because on YouTube, I watch shows, um, for those of you who are foodies out there, mm. if you go onto YouTube and you just type in ramen stall, mm. you're going to get all these videos that are anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes long, and it's literally just these folks in what you know whatever major city in in japan mm. usually tokyo some dude will pull up with a cart another person with a camera and they have an agreement and they start filming and it's literally you know no music no no real narration just people talking and as as the dude's doing his stuff and he just sets the the thing up you know the stall up and you just watch them just do the thing make the ramen and you know, you know it's just like it's just like Usually it's like the menu is one or two items mm. that's ramen, right? Mm -hmm. And so then you just see them just like, you know, like I had no idea there was an actual like drawer system for ramen. Oh, okay. You know, kind hmm. of thing. And so, you know, they go through all this and, but it's just like, just like right back camp, there's a system to what they're doing and you're watching it and you're just enjoying what's just, just, just what's happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When there's no, there's no like end of it, like, you know, you know, Takasai's head pops out of the, you know, the, the urn. It's just like has a ramen. You know? it's, just, it's just like it's just like it's just like this nice little visual. And I found myself like you know like you know looking at the screen going, 
can I have? Can I have? <laughs> he wants the precious. Well, he wants it. <laughs> so yeah, so I've been um, kind of been doing that actually watching the wrong thing and um, Loki's a little bit. Oh, okay. So it's not bad. It's just okay. Bad. okay. All right. So you know, All if right. I had to choose between the back camp and Loki, it's going to be. Yeah, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. And um, that'll be by one episode if I can today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, Little bit, step by step. Mm -hmm. The journey of a thousand miles begins with one, one step. Exactly. Exactly. Curry. Um, curry ramen. Brand? Folks yeah. watching Sailor Moon and Gundam. That's awesome. Uh, good choices. So, uh, with uh, some guests here at the house, fellow otaku guests in the house, we have been watching some stuff. Um, uh, some things that I'd seen before, some that I had not. Um, um, <laughs> that almost felt like, and I'm scarred for life. Well, and I hate things. actually, uh, yeah. The. Um, <laughs> Uh, Rewatched the first episode of Interviews with Monster Girls. Oh, okay. And um, where it's basically a group of monster girls, so a vampire and a Yuki Ona and a uh, Duhal. Um, yeah. um, but where ha having those um, traits are treated as having it like a disability. Yeah. So it's just a thing that you have to deal with. Um, and I had forgotten how incredibly adorable that show is. And particularly the, the main vampire girl. Um, yeah. And just the, the attention they lavish on her facial expressions uh, and how she reacts to things is just absolutely charming. So we watched a couple episodes of that. Um, watched, uh, rewatched the first episode of Please Teacher. Oh, the, Guy Teacher. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the wow. Harem series. I the day. Yeah, I know. Um, it was different this time around. <laughs> Um, I loved it. Did you it. watch the remastered version or something? No. no um, I loved it the first time I watched it because I was impressed. It, they were doing very different things with Harem. Um, budgets have changed since then. <laughs> um, True. Just you know, visually, the art style. And it was early on in like, the, the, the digital co coloring of hand right. animation. And so right. a lot of it is very rough and kind of inconsistent from shot to shot. Uh, so that was kind of tough. Um, so, um, yeah, and then uh, there's a lot of because anime moments in it. <laughs> um, and, and a lot of like, oh, this is going to get creepy. And it doesn't actually, but you're ready for it. You're primed for right. the, you know. Um, and then they say this thing and they say this thing. And they're like, oh, here we go. Um, so knowing that it doesn't go in that direction and that it becomes much more of a... Um, a, a story about teens growing up, kind of, and teens kind of dealing with their teen problems uh, helped help me a lot. Um, uh, so there's that. Um, also a couple episodes of Isekai Isekaya. Aha. Uh -huh. What's that? Oh, love that. Now, I had seen that before. Uh -huh. um, uh, and, yeah, that's... Oh, that is just... That's Isekai Nobu? Uh, yeah. Mm, the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love the parts at the end where you have like the cantankerous old like critic <laughs> and he wanders around and he's just like he's like the worst guest. Like people are like on their on their ball, they're like, Here, this is our specialty. He's like, Oh, you know, that's not bad. <laughs> like, mm. Dude, really? Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I'll have some of the fizzy stuff with it. And you know, that, that flavor works pretty well. I'll be like, dude, this is oh my gosh. <laughs> like <laughs> they're rolling out the red carpet, you're just like, Oh, it's well, it's a passable. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, Japanese critics are tough, man. You know. I guess so. And then the cooking section at after yeah. this is also. I'm just like, oh yeah, I could do that. I could, mm -hmm. I could make that. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then other things. Um, okay, I'm just gonna talk about um, two of them. Um, one is Princess Lover. Yep. That is the correct response. Um, <laughs> no one remembers Princess Lover. Um, oh gosh, shonen protagonist ends up the head of a giant Zaibatsu company, um, and thus is betrothed to a girl who is 
it's Saber from Fate Stay Night. Um, and, but he, he has already rescued a different girl who is the princess, um, who is on a, in a runaway carriage being pursued by a jeep <laughs> and getting away. And don't forget, he good, catches them good on horses. Moped. That's true, yes. He <laughs> caught up with them on, on a moped, which is very important. Um, and then caught up with that, and then ridiculous um, uh, 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 occurs. Um, I'm going to say it. It's a dumb show, and I loved every minute of it. Um, <laughs> it's one of those things where it knows it's like a visual novel adaptation. It's just, you know, very tropey girls all surrounding the slightly dumb guy. Um, but there's also a revenge plot. Because why not? <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I liked it, too. I, yeah. I didn't have mm-hmm. a problem with it. <laughs> it was good fun. Um, and then there's... Um, Hametsu no Mars. Is this Mars Red? Nope. No. Um, Mars of Destruction. Mars of Destruction. Um, it currently has a 2.2 2 on Ooh. my anime list out of 10. Quite understandably. Um, it is an extraordinarily low budget, 30 minute anime kind of adaptation of like a. Of, I think a video game. Um, it starts. No, I'm not gonna tell you anything about it. <laughs> Mars, Thanks, yeah, Brent. twenty minutes. <laughs> Mars of Destruction. It's on YouTube. Just one of these days, look it up. Start you. It's it is an experience. It's July worth watching. 6, 2005. That sounds right. <laughs> um, oh, it's it's oh, it's an experience. It's just. Nothing is done right in this show. Every, everything about it is just, uh, why did they do this? Why this character? Why did that happen? Why did... Mm, well, at 19 minutes beautiful. listed time, yeah. was it, is it a pilot for something? I mean, it's an OVA. Is it trying to sell us a franchise? Or Not were that they I can trying? tell. I, I think it was ah. just... Somebody's um, fever dream, and they had a right. minuscule budget. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I think it was like so many anime adaptations. It's like, go play. You know, we have a successful video game. Let's make an anime out of it. Well, we don't really have the budget for a movie or for a TV series or whatever, but we can squeak out a twenty-minute thing. We have some folks who haven't been working on hentai in a while, so we can bring them in. You know, <laughs> basically. This will give the kids something to look at while they buy the next version, the special right. edition of the video game. Exactly. Ah. So, so, so it's called Mars of Ma- Destruction. Mars, Mars of, of destruction. the Destruction. All right. Yep. All right. Um, Hametsu no Mars. Yep. That's the one. Um, oh. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's, oh, it's an experience. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I got I got 19 minutes of time. I'm yeah. Hurt. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about it next week. We'll definitely talk about it next week. <laughs> this will be our review for next week. Yep. That's the no review Mars. of next week. We'll just be like, just like, no. No. Just stop. Whiskey. Uh, Whiskey. Uh, <laughs> I've begun the legal proceedings to get back my 19 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you might. Give me